Hello, welcome to the Arseholics podcast. Firstly, huge apologies. I know it's been, what, a few weeks? Three weeks, yeah, maybe? It's been a while. It's been a while. And I, I'm not sure how everyone's been going about their, their lives without the podcast for three weeks. So we really, really, really apologise. Um, I, I, look, there's an old number of reasons why we couldn't record. The main one was a, a, a very nice reason. Aaron in one of the Arseholics got married. You probably saw some of our... Um, our Instagram posts, some stuff on Twitter. I tried to live stream the wedding at one point. And, uh, and at one point, I think there was there was all of 14 people who that's were a, watching. That's a record. That's Aaron, a exactly, record. Aaron's entrance. But then when the bride came in, uh, I think there was one person. <laughs> there was one person who, who tuned in for that. So that was quite fun. But I appreciate that we're not like a, uh, you know, a wedding podcast. So you know, everyone's <laughs> probably just like, this is well off brand and got really annoyed. So I hope we didn't lose any followers <laughs> as a result of that. Do apologize. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously, um, a yeah, lovely day and everything. We lost to Liverpool. So that obviously ruined the whole day. Um, but, um, but anyway, that's long in the past now. So, you know, we are reflecting on a few things, but the most the most recent thing to reflect on, and I think the thing that we will focus first of all is we've just come off the back of a nice victory against Newcastle. Um, I should introduce, you know, for, for people who can't see him, for people who are listening purely on an audio based uh, pod, uh, I've got Mize with me. Hello, Mize. Evening. Evening. How you doing, Raj? I'm all right, mate. Sorry, I was a bit late to introduce you. No, no, it was a good intro. I liked it. I liked it. Yes, okay, that's, that's good. That good summary of the last few weeks. It's been a bit of a mental few weeks, hasn't it? It has. We, we may as well make it sound like that because otherwise we're just going to like we're like proper dossers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we just couldn't be asked to record. It's not the case. That's not and, the case. And even now people are just saying like, just get to the football. You know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but look, on actually a positive note, like uh, obviously because Aaron did get married and all of that kind of stuff, he's not going to be as busy with anymore. Um, hopefully we can get at least three of us back on the podcast pretty soon. So it won't just be a, um, you know, if his missus lets him. Show. If his missus, exactly. He's got, yeah, a, he's, he's got to navigate all that, doesn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, he's a newbie it's, in that field. So let's see. Different. If you never see him again, you never see him again. You know why, right? So. Exactly. I mean, it's different for us, like seasoned campaigners. We know yeah, the techniques. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, I'm just going down to get a glass of water, and then you record a podcast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Mm. so yeah, we've got, we got to teach him all the tricks. I'm sure um, we'll be back soon. I'm sure we'll be back soon. He will. He will. Um, he wasn't at the Newcastle game, so he wouldn't be able to add any great insight to it <laughs> a, a, anyway. But we both were, so we can talk about it, right? So, yeah. you know, I think with, with with the Newcastle game, it <laughs> was, you know, it was really important, I think, that we, you know, we didn't let the Liverpool game kick us off into a sp- a downward spiral after such a you know a positive spell of just getting points on the board of just great momentum the the belief in the team the belief in the fans and then you get spanked like we did against Liverpool um you know it felt like the right thing to do for the team was just to 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 put it behind them learn what they can but ultimately understand that perhaps that you know that game didn't define them but you know we got to Newcastle didn't we Mize and it was it was freezing Mm. freezing freezing cold um, early kickoff. So, you know, 12.30. So most people haven't had too much time to get tanked up beforehand. So that made the cold even colder, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a pretty crap kick. I mean, it's a crap kickoff time generally. It was, it was not good for me personally because I had something on in the morning. So you saw me rushing down the stairs. I literally made it a couple of minutes before kickoff. Um, so yeah, not, not great from that perspective. And yeah, like you said, I think the atmosphere wasn't the best this season. It was okay. It was decent. But uh, yeah, it wasn't the best this season. And I think the reasons that you just mentioned probably um, are probably why uh, very early, early Saturday, more afternoon, lunchtime. And uh, yeah, not much alcohol in a lot of people's systems. Um, But yeah, like, I mean, I was generally, a lot of people, I don't know, I've seen a lot of the reaction. Obviously, it's been a couple of days since the game. I've seen a lot of the reaction and a lot of people were not really that happy with the performance overall, especially the first half, and I can understand why, but I feel like off the back of that result uh, against Liverpool, it would have been, and I guess when you add into the mix, like when you frame the game, um, you know, Eddie Howe's first match, I think it was his first match. Yeah, it was his um, first game that he was physically there because he had COVID for the okay, last right, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so yeah, I guess his first match. Um, and, you know, there's always that risk, even though they're a team that are bottom of the league and I think haven't won a game. Uh, hadn't won a game go- going into playing us. There's always that 
risk, you know, uh, of a like, yeah, new manager bounce. Um, they're going to be well up for it. They've got nothing to lose kind of thing. And, and I guess the way the game transpired, you know, it was pretty much us trying to break down a, a you know, a 10-man defense or 10-man, uh, yeah, 10 men behind the ball pretty much. Um, and I think if you get a result at the end of that, um, and, 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 you know, we managed to score a couple of goals in the second half and we did sort of improve the performance um, in the second half. I feel like you've got to be fairly happy. So I'm just, yeah, no, I'm just sort of reflecting on the game generally, really, in terms of the performance. Mm. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, again, it wasn't one of the best performances of the season, but pretty happy, pretty happy with the results, to be honest. And I think, like I said, off the back of what happened against Liverpool, it could have gone the other way quite easily. And we've seen it happen before. So I think that's a good sign, um, a good sign from this team and that kind of bounce back ability. Um, you know, we're definitely able to show that. So yeah, overall pretty pleased. Yeah, I mean, definitely about the bounce back ability is a great throwback to an Ian Dowie. He's the one who coined yeah. the phrase, didn't he? Um, but mm. just talking about that first half a little bit is interesting because if we... Yeah, if I th- think about a, uh, a feature of our sort of more recent spell under Arteta, a lot of our good wins have come out of starting games at a very, very fast pace. We've been really taking games by the scruff of the neck, almost winning the game in the first half an hour, you know, in a yeah. lot of games. If you, if you look at games like um, like Spurs, like Villa, like Leicester. Um, and this was like a, a throwback to the Unai Emery times. Do you remember we had that whole spell where it was, the Unai Emery era for, for a while was really boring first halves. Yeah. If, do you remember? It was like, yeah. it's like absolutely nothing first halves. And then all of a sudden, second half would be a different team. And, mm. and you know, we were winning, we were sort of scraping games along and, and you know, it was, it was always a tough... And this was a bit like that. I don't, and how much do you think that the weather... I know it sounds lame, but how much do you think a weather, the weather played into this? Because obviously the weather certainly affected the fans. Do you think the weather affected the pace of the game? Mate, you sound like Arsene Wenger. Um, <laughs> not, I don't know, mate. I didn't even consider that, to be honest. So I, I don't really think so. Um, like, I guess there's a number of new players in the team that haven't played in England before. Uh, Tavares and um, Tommy Asu, the ones Tavares, that to uh, ironically, who is the, 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 you know, the most yeah, exactly. high-energy yeah, yeah, player yeah, on the pitch. Exactly, yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say so, to be honest. I'm trying to think if there's any reason why that might be the case. Do you, do you think so? Um, and I, I look, I think it was just maybe it was a coincidence, but it, it certainly felt that there was a you know, the, the weather was cold, the fans were flat, the team was flat. Like, you know, I don't yeah, know how, okay. how much all those things you, are. I get, yeah, 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 I get what you mean. I get what you mean. But to be fair, it feels like the team sort of turned it on themselves in the second half. So I don't know if it was mm. the halftime team talk or 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 what kind of changed things. Obviously, the second goal, and, I, and I'm jumping ahead here, but you know, the second goal being that enforced substitution, Marcelli having to come on, I guess, you know, he brought it, brought his own kind of personal energy as it were. Um, true, true. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what the reason was for that flat performance. Um, uh, it, it might've just been a case of, you know, you're, 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 you're trying to, like I said, you're trying to break down a team that have just come to do nothing, but try and take a point, you know, and try, try to, try to either nick a goal if they can from something like a set piece or like that Shelby shot, um, but if not, they're happy to just go away with with any sort of draw that they can they can take. And, and when you're trying to break that sort of team down, you need, you know, that extra bit of quality or you need that, um, uh, you know, a, a, one of one, one of your attacking moves to, to come off um, something to happen. And that just didn't happen in the first half. Didn't it? Like, I think, but, you know, still a feature of the first half was was one of the things that we've been doing well generally this season outside of perhaps you know a battering to Liverpool and a couple of batterings at the beginning of the season um you know the defense were for me rock solid in the first half they continue to be in the second half but if we just focus on the first half for now again it just you know that that feel I never ever got the sense looking at our back five I never got the sense once that they didn't know what they were doing I never got the sense that that the centre backs felt like they weren't in complete control and of complete understanding of the threats that Newcastle possessed. I mean, what, what did you think about how we defended? Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I, and like you said, it's become a feature of like this Arteta team now. Um, consistent selection with the back five. We know now who our number one goalkeeper is. We know who, you know, across the back the back line, who are the number one choices. Okay, Tavares didn't play. Um, sorry, Tavares played and Tierney didn't, but. Um, 
he's still been a fairly consistent back four for the last few games because of that Tierney injury. Um, and yeah, I, I, they didn't really threaten. I can't, I'm trying to think it was that Shelby shot, um, mm. which to be fair, was an unreal shot. And, and we were right behind it. Weren't we? That, that mm. out save. And we were both like, wow. Um, another amazing save from him. One that you don't, you know, when you watch it back, you don't think he's going to get to it. It's one that I feel like he shouldn't have really saved. If that makes sense. Like I completely a, agree. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I was going to say exactly the same thing. You know, there are some saves where they look fantastic and all keepers do that. They look fantastic, but if they hadn't saved it, it would have been bad, mm. but yeah, this yeah. wasn't one of those. No, you know? no exactly. you're right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like, uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like, again, we, we talked about this whenever, whenever we started doing this podcast. So, uh, March, April kind of time earlier this year, um, and where the back two, the two center backs were constantly being changed for every game, um, whether it's Louise or Mustafi or, um, Mari um, or holding, you know, it just seems to be, uh, there never seems to be a consistent back two. And obviously, again, we've got that now. So I feel like they, the, the, you know, just that stability, consistency has just brought confidence to the team. I think they all trust each other. Um, and like, yeah, like you said, I mean, like the weakest part of the kind of defensive uh, part of the team feels like, I'm probably being really critical, it probably feels like Thomas Party, to be honest. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, not noticed it. It's not that I'm picking anything, anything specific. I do feel like even though he's kind of joined us as this um, or reputation of being a defensive midfielder, I guess he's not necessarily a traditional defensive midfielder, but I do feel like sometimes his clearances and um, his positional play can be a little bit lacking at times, but yeah, look, in terms of the back five, yeah, absolutely no complaints. We've been, we've been rock solid, another clean sheet. So it's also one of these things I find that when you watch players like Gabrielle live, you I think you get more of appreciation as well of of really the de- not just development. Maybe it's he's always had a bit of this, but he's just he he, he feels so physically imposing. It's just there's this the the defender that I've always thought had this the most was Virgil Van Dijk. Right, whenever I've seen him play at the Emirates. Uh, you know, seeing him live and just seeing that aura and seeing how in control of every situation he is and just how almost like, the, you know, you've always feel sorry for the strikers. They don't have any chance. I'm not saying Gabriel's on that level. I'm absolutely not, mm. but he is growing into that sort of a player, you know, mm. with that, with that kind of imposition, he's just, he's got everything. He's got the, the strength. He's got size. He's got pace. He's got control. Um, and he's, he's having a, like a, a fantastic season. Hasn't yeah. It? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, I can kind of see where you're coming from with the comparison. I, I I get what you mean when you say we're not comparing the two players, but I I, I know what you mean. Um, and yeah, look, hopefully his kind of uh, path leads him to where you know Van Dyke is. There's, there's a huge age gap between the two, right? So mm-hmm. Gabriel's still very 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 early days in his kind of career, and he's still really young for a centre back. When you think about, it. what is he like twenty? 20- 23 24 yeah max yeah. i think it's 23 yeah so that's that's extremely young for to be playing week in week out for 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 you know a big team um uh, as 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 a center back um and yeah like there were quite a few duels with um Callum Wilson wasn't it playing up front mm-hmm. uh and he seemed to boss Callum Wilson with ease and i'm not saying Callum Wilson is like one of the best strikers in the league but he can be a dangerous player um and you could see the two of them were going at it in that first half when, when we were behind our, the, you know, the end that Arsenal were defending in that first half, you could see Wilson was trying to, to sort of provoke, not provoke, but, you know, just, just as a striker does, he was trying to annoy Gabriel. He was trying to like, you know, when the 50 fifties or the balls were going up in the air, he was trying to dig an elbow in or whatever it might have been. And, you know, uh, Gabriel didn't really, you know, he had a calm head the entire time, which was, which was also nice to see. And again, like when you consider his age, he's, he's, um, you know, he's, showing a lot of maturity so yeah him and him and ben white are sort of leading the back line really really well and again mate you got you can't you can't fault it at the moment uh, even though we did concede four goals against liverpool you just, you just <laughs> right you know that that is a bit of an exception when you, when you look at the, the other teams mm. in the league like those top teams we're just not there yet so yeah long may continue absolutely and you know there, there are another couple of things um that yeah, we could talk about in the game. There's some of those things that I want to just say, because after we talk about Newcastle, we're going to just reflect a little bit more broadly about where we are. And I think a couple of things, these things we can say for then, but just other, you know, I I guess things to talk about specifically in this game, Tavares was interesting, wasn't he? Because 
I think in the first half, certainly from where we were sitting, there was a lot of frustration that was growing with, you know, a lot of the people that at least I could hear kind of talking around what he was doing that game. You know, he was fine. It was very high energy, but it felt like there was something very haphazard to what he was trying to do. Um, and then, and then, uh, you know, certainly I felt that a completely different entity came out in the second half in terms of kind of the actual execution of what he was doing. He, I thought he was absolutely magnificent in that second half. I mean, did you notice any any change in that way? Um, yeah, I mean, I, again, I agree with 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 like your assessment of his first and second half performances. Um, like, I I feel I feel like it was quite a harsh. Like he was getting quite harshly treated in that first half. It was because I feel like he's he comes across as the kind of player again, considering his age and he's new to the league, new to the team, and he's not first choice left back. Really, he's not first choice mm. left back. Um, when you consider all of these things, he's still, you know, he's not, he never takes a safe route. Like he never takes a safe route. He's a very bold player. He's always trying to take someone on. He's um, willing to like work his ass off. He's back and forward, you know, up and down the line. Um, yeah. And he's always trying to do something that will create an opening. And even, even those shots that he was taking and the crosses that weren't coming off and he was hitting the first man. Okay, fine. You know, execution was poor, but I, I still feel like, you know, he's, I, I'm, just, I'm sort of trying to think of another fullback that we've had in the past. who's probably been a bit more cautious, but can't think of one. Like a Monreal type. Yeah. Like yeah, a Monreal. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's a, that's a good, that's a good uh, player to compare against, but yeah, he, he's basically just, he's willing to take the risk of something going wrong, mm. but it obviously came right in the second half with his, with his assist. So um, I, I kind of commend him for that, really. I mean, yeah, maybe decision making needs to improve a little bit when he's taking, you know, twenty-five yard pot shots when there's a potential pass on, or should we continue to build it, build up? But at the same time, you know, one of the complaints from the first half was the build up was really, really slow. So him trying to make something happen and it doesn't come off, you know, you kind of okay, fine, but um, you know, don't don't kill the guy for it, like. Um, yeah, so so really commend him for kind of that that bravery and being bold with the with the way he wants to play, and he's always looking forward, right? He's always attacking, which is really really nice to see. And he kind of it's a nice balance from the right hand side where Tommy Asu is a bit more. He does get forward, and again he got an assist as well. But um, I feel like he doesn't really have it in his locker to sort of knock it past the player and go around him, or you know, he, he, or take take someone on one on one, um, whereas whereas uh, Tavares does. So yeah, no, I thought I thought overall it was a very very good. Good game for him, yeah. And I wonder if it's a case where, yeah, you know, where Tavares is 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 being encouraged to do all these things, and we're playing a system which because because I think one of the things that, that I've, I've noticed is despite you know how he looks quite gung ho and he, he seems to take up very attacking positions, he's in gets in shooting positions, he comes centrally, whatever. We never look exposed on that left hand side when he's doing this. So you know, it really feels like there is some very specific instruction that's trying to say, look, you're good at all these things. You know, you you, you, you can cause a bit of havoc and it's probably hard for teams to plan, um, you know, when you've got a fullback who's doing all those kinds of things. And clearly we've set up in a way that compensates it. So, um, yeah, look, look, I, look, I, I agree with you. Um, he's, he's so young, he's, you know, and he, he's obviously going to get better in the execution of some of those things. Um, I guess, you know, that, that probably leads up to the first goal. It, it, it did sort of get... You know, whereas the first half, um, maybe there was a bit of a lack of energy. It felt like second half really, really upped it. Tavares was a real heartbeat in that. And the goal, he had a big part to play in the goal, didn't he? It was, a, it was, it was interesting in that goal, seeing Saka sort of switch over to the left-hand yeah. side. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think the, the interesting thing, that I think there was another chance as well that came from, I can't remember which one now, but the, obviously the goal comes from, like you said, Saka and Smith Rowe playing like quite close together. And obviously mm. Smith Rowe was involved in the goal with Tavares and uh, Lokonga down the left. Um, and yeah, like I'm definitely, I'm pretty sure there was, I noticed it in the game, there was another time where Smith Rowe and Saka sort of, sort of seemed to be interchanging passes with each other and created something out, out of that. Um, and yeah, you know, we've said it before about Saka and Smith Rowe, but like, I was going to ask you as well, when, um, when he obviously uh, Tav Tavares plays him in, and he's about to shoot, basically. Did you, like, because personally, I didn't think he was going to score. I thought he was going to miss. Mm. Did you, what did you think? Because like, no, I, I, I thought I, it was a very, very good finish, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I didn't expect him to score from there. Well, it's interesting, because what I was going to say, actually, was um, similarly, I didn't expect him to score. But it feels like with Saka, he's, he's, he's a really interesting prospect when it comes to finishing. He's not like a reliable finisher, mm. right? He's not, 
if there's something I think a lot of fans agree on, it's that he needs to get a bit more clinical. But what's interesting is that quite a lot of his goals are very good finishes. Mm, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. And I think um, there's only one place he could have really hit that and uh, uh, and uh, to give himself a good chance of going in. And it was there. You know, he went very low, right in that corner, tough angle, sort of smashed it as hard as he could. And it, and it I mean, it looked fantastic. Um, and it's, it's you know, it, it's something which I, I think the really nice thing about it is Saka, for me, is someone who who was trying to get over that Euro fatigue. I think there was still something there was still something where I felt like he hadn't quite hit the heights of what he was doing last season, um, and and I worried a little bit that will he be able to hit those levels that he was hitting last season, or will this mm-hmm. fatigue carry through? Um, but yesterday, uh, you know, I, I mean, sorry, not yesterday, but the game, and ironically, obviously, he ended up getting injured. But you know, it felt like that energy was there, particularly in that second half. And yeah, look, it was a it was a fantastic finish, but real real credit to that reverse pass from Tavares, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like to yeah. take up that position, you know, it's a, again, we talk about, you know, I think they mentioned it on match of the day here in the UK, the sort of, you know, Mika Richards was talking about how much he enjoys seeing fullbacks take these positions now. And it was just a really interesting position for a fullback to be in, you know, fairly central kind of in the box and to have the presence of mind to do a switch like that and on his weaker foot, um, you know, and it was, it was, it was a lovely move, got, got him behind them and scored. And then, um, and unfortunately, quite soon after that, uh, Saka, Saka, because Saka went down a couple of times, right? He went down once, yeah. kind of shook it off, and then he went down again. And I think obviously they went, they they, they were cautious and took him off. Um, and then Gabriel Martinelli comes on, someone I think that, yeah, I'd still, I think, I think Gab Martinelli is a really interesting entity, right? Because he's a big fan favorite. I think fans love him, but I think fans recognise that we've got quite good players, you know, we've got Saka and we've got Emil Smith Rowe that are also fan favorites that are doing a really good job. It's tough for him to get a break. Um, but I think everyone wants him to have a break and he came on and, and God, yeah, what, a, what an introduction, <laughs> you know, yeah. talk us through that goal. Yeah. I mean, I think it was like his second touch, wasn't it? Um, it was, it all seemed quite like the build up all seemed quite easy. Um, because, uh, Ben, I think Ben White is just plays a, plays a simple ball out to Tommy Asu and, Martinelli makes a run, literally no one tracks him. And it's, um, you know, from that point on, it's a, it is a good little lofted ball, but Martinelli still has it, has it all to do. Um, it's not, you know, I mean, I don't know if, I don't know if you play football actually, but if you try and do that, like, I mean, if I tried to do that hundred times, that's just, I'm missing the ball 50 times and 49 times, I'm probably smashing it miles over. Um, and you say you don't set. know if I play football, by the way, right? So we yeah. played an 11 aside game together, which you always claim not to remember, where I scored the most amazing scorpion kick from outside the box. And there are loads of people who no will way. validate that. You really? played in that game. You guys won 5-3. I don't remember the... Oh, my God, no. I don't remember that. Supremacy. It was basically not scorpion kick. It was a decanio. No way, really? God's sake. On, I can't believe, no one's going to believe this. Some footage. Yeah, I know. We need some footage, really. Right. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. few, so this, is, this is uni days then yeah this is Obviously. uni days yeah mm. oh man you got one one five three go ask ahilan yeah right yeah because he scored he scored a blinder in that game as well but you know, he remembers my goal <laughs> go ask him anyway point is yes get back to your point i just you know uh, you mean like i don't know if you play football i'm <laughs> playing against you Doka. sorry man sorry i apologize i apologize well done on the goal as well thank you <laughs> we lost that we lost so it wasn't good. Anyway. um yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. Look, very difficult technique, um, obviously. And yeah, I mean, uh, it just, uh, it, it just felt, you know, he, he watched it. Um, he just watched it come over his head and he obviously didn't put a huge amount of power onto it, but the timing of the shot was basically perfect. So that all, the, all you know, the, yeah, the timing was perfect. So he got the right connection and, um, yeah, just a very, another very, very good goal. Um, but like I said, I just felt like, that second goal, as much as we struggled up until that point, that second goal, the, the actual build up to it seemed to be fairly easy. And Newcastle seemed to just not like they just seemed to switch off. Oh, I don't know if you see have you seen the footage? Like, so the defensive line that Newcastle had yeah. for that goal was horrible. It's oh, no, yeah, it. it's yeah. effectively a it's effectively a straight diagonal line. <laughs> Like the still, the still is horrible. Like it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's the worst. And yeah, I mean, you know, not taking anything away, the, the goal itself was, I've seen this go around on Twitter. I don't know if you see it. It's almost identical this to a goal that Ronaldo scored um, for Real Madrid. And obviously when Ronaldo scores this goal, it's, oh my God, Ronaldo, that is 
just you know oh, i think i remember that ronaldo goal goal yeah 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 it just the ball comes over top and he bangs it and yeah, the, yeah, i've yeah, seen yeah, them yeah. being played side by side um uh, okay, i mean it's it, it's yeah. truly it was a truly exceptional 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 finish and it's like it's something that I think that he's obviously capable of, uh, capable of. We saw glimpses before his big injury. You know, it was so nice. It was a nice throwback goal. It's also nice because you worry a little bit if, Zaka, if Saka's injury is going to be something that keeps him out, mm. then, you know, clearly you've got a guy who's, uh, you know, capable of doing that and is, 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 is kind of, you know, getting into some form if you like Uh, because he was pretty good afterwards as well wasn't he he was very energetic I think Mm. he nearly he kind of he probably should have done better with another chance a bit later where it was um, another really good ball played out from the left um, across to him but um, you know whatever the case but I mean you know a win's a win we needed a win to to um, to get over the line it was two two nils nice solid clean sheet two goals very nice Um, and you know now we given Given and now let's let's kind of reflect a little bit on where we are because I was just going to say West Ham predicted predictably drew uh, sorry West Ham predictably lost to Man City away, yeah. um, and you know although West Ham have been you know, ex- brilliant this season brilliant absolutely brilliant um, you know you'd back Man City to beat them at home Man City did so that puts us level on points level on points after is it is it thirteen games or is it twelve games thirteen yeah. So 13 games with lever on points with Man City with West Ham. Mm-hmm. Let's take let's put some things into context because I think this is important. We in that period of time, we've played City, we've played Man City away, we've played Liverpool away, we've played Chelsea at home, we've played Tottenham at home, we've played Leicester away. Um, we've played some teams in that historical top six, seven kind of bucket. We've played a disproportionate amount of games against better opposition when you look at it in that way mm-hmm. actually yeah so i think look at that proportionality and to look at it and then and, and say that we are sort of joint fourth at the moment um to look at it and then think that if you've got teams like man united and we'll come to review the man united game um and you know in, in a second but you know there are some teams that are doing worse than us that have played proportionately a higher percentage of easier games on paper you know teams mm-hmm. like man united haven't actually played many of those good teams that we've just mentioned. So, you know, putting that into context, I don't want, I don't want to lead the witness, <laughs> but, you know, what do you, getting battered against Liverpool aside and, you know, well, sorry, I shouldn't say that, taking that into account, taking everything into account, mate, mm. where, we, where we are right now, how do you feel? I'm over the, I'm honestly over the moon with, with like, basically, as you summed it up, um, Lee, well, okay. Uh, probably caveat i'm over the moon with where we sit in the league and how close we are to basically well, we're, we're, we're level on points with, with west ham in fourth as you said so we're we're you know uh pushing top four um so if you look at it if you just if you just look at that and you look at the results and you look at the games that we've lost the three of the four games that we've lost as the ones you pointed out you'd expect you probably expect us to lose those, right? They're against three of the teams that are three of the best teams in Europe at the moment, and the three team. One of those three teams is going to win the league, and the other two are going to come second and third. Um, the only You're other completely game, right, yeah. yeah. And the only other game was the Brentford game, which you know all sorts of circumstances, and we've talked that talked that one to death. So, so if you think about the fact that we're not really drawing too many games, we seem to be winning the games that we should be winning, which is kind of what you'd ask for when you put the league into the context of there are three teams that are just going to be better than everyone this season and we are trying to be the next best team basically um yeah I'm very very happy um and I think I think where you start to get a little bit worried is when you start to look at things a bit more closely um and as much as we've like you know we've praised how solid the defensive has been aside from those those specific games um, been very, very solid um, and very consistent. You do have a little bit of a worry in terms of going forward and the form of Aubameyang is a little bit of a worry. The chance creation, <clears throat> excuse me, is a little bit of a worry. But if we carry on, I, I, I said this at the start of the season and, and I think Aaron was saying, you know, after a few games, we, we'd won a few games. I think it was a Norwich game was the one, the pivotal one after we'd lost the first couple and then after we'd won a couple after that, 
you know, Aaron was sort of saying, we want to see some performances now. And I was sort of like, well, yeah, okay. We don't want to go through a whole season of scraping wins and, and not playing in, not playing good football. And that isn't really going to be, you know, it doesn't really work like that. Like the performances will need to come. I, I agree. Mm. But I think for this first half of the season, if we can, you know, if you take us up to Christmas, up to new year, if we can, be where if we can if we are where we are if we end up sorry you know what i'm trying to say right if come new year we're we're fourth fifth sixth in that kind of position but more importantly even if we're further down the table but we've we're close on points you know we're in touch within touching distance on points then i don't really know what else you could ask for as an arsenal fan considering the last couple of seasons um because you can clearly see that improvement that the improvement is very, very obvious to see when you look at, for example, the point points we've accumulated in this calendar year is up there with, you know, it's, it's top four from what, from the stats I've been seeing the last few weeks. So yeah, man, like I'm overall really, really happy. I, I think we'll overtake West Ham in the next few weeks. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen on Thursday against United. Um, I, I know we're going to talk about that, but I think when you look at the other fixtures, when you look at um, Southampton, Newcastle, is it West Ham? No, not Newcastle. Sorry, who am I thinking of? Southampton, West Ham, and someone else in there. I think there, um, there are definitely winnable games, which um, I think, yeah, I, I can see us overtaking overtaking West Ham in the next few weeks, and then, you know, if we're if again if we're in that fourth, fifth, or sixth area um, of positions come end of the year, then it's on for it's on for the rest of the season for us to potentially push for a top four. Finish. I mean, I don't really know what any other Arsenal fans are expecting this season, really. Like, yeah, you know, I don't know about. I don't know how you feel about it. I think you hit the nail on the head with many of the things that you said. I think. I think one of the key things you said is I'm not really sure what what uh, uh, what any Arsenal fan could expect more than this. I think. Mm. I think one of the things you know, if we if we look across our fan base, if we look at Twitter, I think fine. There, there are people that are getting very concerned about some of what, you know, one of the things that you did raise, which is a fact, the fact that I think attacking wise, we still leave something to be desired. I still think there's work to do this, whether it's a case of players just needing to be more clinical because Oba isn't for whatever reason, it's just not quite happened for him um, recently, even though his goal tally isn't bad. You know, I think there's some things that have, you know, he scored a hat-trick in the Carling Cup and things like that have, have sort of pushed that number up. He doesn't quite look that sharp. Laka, um, you know, is making a difference overall when he's played and he rightfully kept Odegaard out of the team for a while. But, um, you know, from a from a clinicalness, there wasn't, I haven't seen too much there. And um, yeah, and definitely with chance creation. So all those things, you know, that people have looking looked into expected goals a lot and all those things, I think, yes, that, that, that there is a bit of a concern, but... But you know what? Overall, it's it's a game of attacking and defending. We might just be a team that, because of the way that we set up, mm. um, we don't create a shed loads of chances. For maybe we are not going to be a team. Maybe we will never be a team under Arteta that plays the type of football that Arsene Wenger played. We, we might not be slicing teams open like yeah. kind of left, right, and center. It might not be, but maybe maybe we just need to get over that and we just need to deal with that and and just accept that there are different ways to skin a cat. You know, there's different ways to win football games. And so at the moment, like you say, could any Arsenal fan in, the, in, in, a, in a sane state of mind think that we could finish in the top three? No way. Like no. you said, any of those three, te- three teams can not only win the league, any of those three teams can win the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. One of those three teams probably will win the Champions League. Mm. Two of those teams were in the Champions League final last year. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? This is yeah. not this, this, it's so to, to you know. So the best that we can possibly expect is being the best of the rest, and we're we're joint we're joint best of the rest at the moment. Yeah. So you know, fine. So I think we we agree with that. I think we agree with with, with some of the concerns. One of the other concerns that I have, Mars, is I feel like I feel like particularly in defence, if we get a couple of injuries. Mm. I'm really worried about the ability for the stand-ins to be able to maintain whatever kind of level of, call it discipline, tactical discipline, tactical execution, even just individual quality. I, If Ben White gets injured, I don't think Rob Holding can do that job. If Tommy Asu gets injured, I, I'm not, you know, I think it's a step, whoever else we have yeah, coming yeah. in, there is a step down. 
Gabriel, for, yeah, I, th- I think he's pretty everything. But I think that I think as, if if we as long as we still had Ben White, Tommy Yasu, Ramsdale, and you know whoever is playing at left back, I think Mar- Mari could as long as it's not a massive inju- injury to Gabriel. At least because Mari's quite good on the ball, he's he's still quite big. I think that might be okay. But I worry about you know if we get a couple of injuries, could you know I'm worried that it, it could unravel in that way. Yes, yeah, fair point. I hadn't really. I hadn't really considered that, um, and we've we've been yeah we've, we've been lucky obviously right apart from Tierney this season. So um, yeah, I mean, I think I it, I think when you look outside the top three though, mate, potentially you could say that about quite a few teams. Yeah, it's very true. Um, and even to be honest, I say the top three. Even if you look at Liverpool, I think if they get another, you know, Van Dyke is out there, is out their team like he was last season, then they're pretty buggered to be honest. I know that yeah. they've got Canate and whoever else, Matip, but yeah, you can't replace Van Dyke. So um, yeah, like it's, I, I can't disagree with you. Um, I had not something I'd really thought about because everything's going swimmingly well um, yeah. at the back. Uh, so yeah, like fingers crossed that doesn't happen. We probably would be okay to cope for a couple of games, but any long-term injuries would be would be massive. Um, yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, look, just on, on reflection in general, um, like you've got, and I think the other thing you've got to really take into consideration, right? Since all of these new signings have come into the team, like there's a lot of new blood in the team it's a lot of change from last season you know you're talking about um you know a new number one a new center back a new right back is we've had to play a new left back new central midfield partnership like um the, it, it, that's that's huge that's huge there's like very little consistency from last season and they're the guys that have actually probably performed yeah just as well if not better than the guys that were there before um so I think all in all, like, I don't know if we're sum- summarizing and summing up this, this little segment of the episode now, but yeah, all in all, for me, I'm, I'm really, really happy. I didn't expect us to be in this sort of position with this number of points um, at this point in the season. You kind of go into the next few games now. Um, I think I mentioned them and I probably got them wrong, but like United, Southampton, West Ham and whoever else we're playing. Um, like I don't, I don't, we don't fear any of those teams. Like I feel like we can set up and play against all those teams and get results against them. So, 100%. Um, yeah, man, very, very excited. Actually, I'd, I'd probably say that's the right word. I'm actually really excited for kind of what's going to happen. And even if it doesn't, like I'm not, I'm not expecting top four at the end of the season. But I feel like we could have a really good go at it. And if we get it, then mass, like huge, massive for us. But even if we don't, it still, it still could potentially be a really positive season. You know. If you talk about, if you think about it from a long-term, you know, uh, long-term plan under Arteta, it still could be a stepping stone as to where we want to be in the next few years. Totally agree, mate. Totally agree with everything you said. Um, so let's talk about that next fixture that we've got coming up. Uh, we are on Tuesday today. Um, so in two days time, we play Man United. Uh, weird game weird Thursday th- Thursday mm. Thursday 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 games this early on in December you know usually when it gets into the Christmas period and whatever it's a free-for-all but it's a, it's a bit weird uh, I don't know if it's like a bloody, uh, bloody TV um, company it's, t- it? it's TV company is it? and we no, I mean, it's worth like kind of just having a little mention about that because you know Newcastle fans really got screwed over against us on yeah. Saturday yeah. right and, um, you know, in that context of them, you know, having to make it from, because you, for those of you not in the UK and, and who might not know the UK geography, coming from Newcastle to London is basically the same as coming from Scotland to London. Yeah. Mm. Newcastle is right, right on the edge. So to get from Newcastle to London for a 1230 kickoff is hard work. And not only, you know, not only that, but the trains got delayed. And so you had all these people coming down from Newcastle to you know it's a, it's a, it's a five hour train journey maybe so, something something like it's something like that, like that. Yeah. It's, it's something like that it's, it's certainly a five to six hour drive um and uh you know they, they make the trek there for tv the game is brought to 12 30 you know trains delayed it's really harsh um and you know if we if we look at the the game on thursday thursday it's a working day yeah mm. it's a working day to get from it's not a Friday night. Friday's a working day, but, you know, people clock off a little bit early. Thursday's a proper working day. To get for an Arsenal fan to go from, you know, London to Manchester, it's not easy to get there on time. It's a, it's a bit of a piss take, don't you think? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mate. I think the thing is we've all become like accustomed to it, really, because it's been going on for how many years? Um, and it's not just Thursday. Then we play. I've just remembered the other game we've got. So Everton away on the Monday night, which is not really an ideal trip um, for any. No, not Arsenal, at all. Any Arsenal fan. So yeah, look, I mean. I mean, us complaining about it isn't probably going to change anything, but I completely get where you're coming from. Like, um, it, is, it is a piss take. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it means that, like, I mean, not that I'm, I'm complaining, but it means that fans like you and me probably can't go to these games, basically. Like, it's just not really realistic unless you want to take sort of a day and a half, two days off work, whatever. Um, because they're on weekdays, and like you said, everyone, everyone's working. So it makes it really, really difficult, which is quite frustrating. Whereas if it had been on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, potentially could have gone. So, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not good, but I don't know, mate. Like, it's kind of like it's just become one of the things in football that. I didn't even I didn't even think about the Newcastle, you know, the Newcastle fans like it, on, on Saturday. Like it didn't even come into my mind because it's it's just become the norm, right? Yeah. Fixtures just get moved around. I guess the fans just get just have to have to have to, you know, either choose they can't go like like we we would or or you know, pay the money and go the night before and stay in a hotel and yeah, the fans fans get screwed regardless. So yeah. That was a good point to be honest. If I you know, if I was coming from you, because I've done Newcastle um I've been to I've not been to Newcastle to watch Arsenal play, but I've been to Newcastle to St James Park to see a couple of games. And in fairness, maybe a lot of fans did do what you've just said there. And because whenever I've been to Newcastle, I've gone the night before and stayed and had yeah. a great night out in Newcastle yeah. and stuff because it is so far. But anyway, like um, I digress. So like, look, complaints about the you know the the issues for traveling fans aside we've got man united on thursday night it's a it's a truly like it feels like there's, there's always some kind of like narrative and or whatever that's always building up to these games right so now we've got this situation where man united have sacked dolly um which is obviously very sad for us because you know i don't know if you know this wise but you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has never Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's man united had never scored a goal against arteta's arsenal Oh, no way. And how many games? Do you know how many games? I don't know how many games. I didn't read the small print. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, it's like one game, obviously. Yeah. It's more than that. Um, okay. That's, yeah, uh, okay. That's... Um, so, unfortunately, you can't really get better than that, right? Like, no. it's, 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 they've never managed to score a goal against Arteta. Um, and he's gone. Um, and, you know, obviously, Carrick's come in uh, as his interim manager, but they've now appointed, well, you know, as his interim, interim manager. And then now they've appointed a proper interim manager in, in Ralph Rangnick, who... The reports are today that his work permit won't be ready on time for him to be in the dugout on Thursday. Mm. Um, did you think, so there was that question posed to Carrick, right, after the Chelsea game. Obviously, Man United drew away at Chelsea. They got absolutely, completely, completely battered, um, but managed to come away with a, a one-all draw. I think Chelsea broke the record for the highest number of corners in a game or something ridiculous. I think I saw the stats. I think it's 22 shots to Chelsea, one to Man United. Something absolutely mm. fast, but they got the 1-1. One, one. But a, a notable thing was the lineup was a little bit different. They seemed to work a lot harder than they have done. Carrick was asked the question point blank, you know, by the by the interview after the game, did Ralph Rangnick uh, influence any of the decisions, any of the tactics, anything? He point blank said no. Mm. Okay. Uh, now he would say that. He would say that for a number of reasons, but what, what do you think? Do you think that Ralph is is there? Like, do you think he's trying to implement some stuff before he can get on the ground? Um, I think, I think he probably would have had a conversation with Carrick because I think the plan is he's going to keep Carrick and is it Mike Phelan still there as one of the yeah. assistants? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think some of the existing staff are still going to remain. I could be wrong on that. But that's why I read like last week. Mm -hmm. Um. So I guess he more than likely would have given Carrick a call, or I don't know who who is who he's phoning, but someone, and ended up speaking to Michael Carrick to to sort of almost say I don't know, maybe it's, I don't know, it's like out of courtesy to say you know I'm going to be I'm going to be there next week. How's it going? Any major injury concerns? That kind of thing. Maybe just trying to get an update on how things are going. You know, any players that, that he's got a concern over that kind of thing. Like what's the status of the squad health going to be when I join? And I guess in that conversation, maybe he might try and influence things a little bit, but I don't know, man, I think. Like how I, much could he have think, said in yeah, it? Yeah. And I think yeah. if, you th if you're Ralph Randick, you've got a bit of a free pass this season. Like mm. there's no, like, like they're, they're, they're doing pretty badly, but yet they're still kind of in the champions league. They've obviously got the FA cup when that, when that starts in, in January or resumes in January, whatever, you know, we, we, the Premier League teams join in January. So 
um he's basically got a free pass um or a free hit at every competition like they're they're quite far off i say they're quite far off they're quite far down the league i guess they're not that far off the top four in terms of points so i guess the target's going to be try and get in the top four progress in the champions league um as far as they can go maybe try and win the fa cup something like that so i don't know i don't think for one game is he really going to come in and say right i want you to drop ronaldo and i want you to tell Fred to do this and put in a masterclass or whatever. Like, I just, I can't really, he might have said one or two things and said, you know, I don't know, like it might have been a couple of tactical insights that maybe he thought are worth sharing, but I think that's as far as it goes. That's, that's how I think it would have. Would have I agree out. with you. I agree. I, I can't, I can't practically see how he could have done anything more than that. Like what, what are you supposed to do over the phone? Or like, yeah. I, I, you know, I don't really, the, the really interesting thing I think with this is, is that you've got, you've got this guy who's this, quite famous club builder you know he's um that seems to be his forte we look at his history his managerial career it's been quite an interesting one because a few things stand out one he's he's never really he's never managed any of the the big sides in inverted commas he's never done that the i think the longest he's ever managed a team is four years or four to five years Mm -hmm. uh and i'm gonna say that was hoffenheim i think um he even with red with with Leipzig, obviously he's been involved in Leipzig for for a while, but I think he'd managed them for I think for a total of maybe two 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 and a half years over two spells. I think I think I think that was it. Um, so this is a guy who, you know, so that four year spell at Hoffenheim I think was about ten years ago. Yeah. So since then it's been a bit big. He's not a guy who's he's, he's a guy who's clearly in in many ways thrown the managerial towel in. Yeah. He, he says he you know he, he wants to do more than that. So this this whole consultancy thing is. You know, probably more up his street. Um, but how do you think? You know, it's, it is an interesting one, though, right? Because allegedly, the style of play that you know he tries to build, and the style of style of play that he has coached, and um, and he's had a success as a coach taking clubs who were third division, second division teams, and getting them to really punch above their weight and and and, and do really well. It's very different to, to to doing it at Man United, right? It's very very different to like going to one of the super clubs and trying to turn that super club from a team that's already meant to win lots of stuff to win lots of stuff. Mm. Um, You know, it's very different from doing that to taking a, you know, a poor team on paper and getting them to really punch above their weight and, you know, and, and, and get promoted a few times. Um, And so, you know, all that taken into account, do you fear him, Mize, as an interim manager first? Do you, do you fear the impact that he could have on Man United this season? Um. I wouldn't say fear. I wouldn't say fear is the right word, but I, I feel like, I think, I mean, I don't know, mate. It's, I feel like he, there's definitely going to be an impact uh, because he's going to make changes. Like the way that he plays, the way that he wants his teams to play, um, you know, high pressing, high energy. It sounds like he's, he's going to expect a hell of a lot of work rate from whoever he, he decides to start, which I don't think was happening under, under Solskjaer. Um, So I think there's definitely going to be a change and he's going to have an impact. I'm just not really sure with the players that he's going to have, unless they kind of go out in the market in January, which would be like pretty sensational. You think about how much they have like spent um, in the last couple of years, but uh, yeah, with the players that he has got, um, I'm not sure if that's necessarily going to work, but I can see him not being afraid of making changes. I can see him playing, you know, bringing in someone like Van der Beek, for example, who's just obviously been sort of left out in the cold. And I can see him dropping players um, where he feels like they don't deserve to start games. Um, but look, they're Man United at the end of the day. They're as, as kind of poor as they've been this season. I don't know how many points they're off us. I don't think it's a huge number. It's not that, it's not that yeah, much. It's not, it's not that bad. So... It's and we're 13 games in, right? We're not 30 games in. So um there's so much time for things to change in this season. We could go tits up, who knows? Um, so yeah, like I wouldn't say fear is necessarily the right word, but fully aware of kind of how good the number of good players that Man United have got, you know, you can't you can't dismiss that. They've got some world class players that hasn't changed just because they've had a patchy start to the season. No. So fully expect them to be, you know, they finished second last season. I think they finished second, right? You know, yeah. And, yeah, uh, and uh, it was those same players that got them there. Plus, they've got 
some better. really good additions. Yeah, yeah exactly. When you, of, when you think of the guys they bought in. So, um, no, I, 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 I think that, you know, again, I think they'll come back. Um, and I think it's just, it's just uh, potentially, you know, yeah, it could be a really, really good battle between like us, them, West Ham, maybe Spurs, you know, maybe a couple of other, other teams for sort of the top well, top four and then, you know, fifth and sixth as well. It could be a really interesting battle. Well, yeah, I fully expect them to come back, man. Like you can't, yeah, I, I can't really see how with that, with the players that they've got, um, clearly under Solskjaer, things were going very, very wrong. And mm. um, I don't know if they stopped playing, playing for him or he lost, he lost the dressing room a little bit or, or what, but um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it'll be a positive change for them. Let's just see kind of how positive, um, because like I said, the players they've got are are still very, very good in general. Yeah, I think I think for um f- for United, uh part of the issue will be that the defense, the defensive statistics that seem to be, you know, thrown out there paint them as among the worst in the league at some of these stats, right? You know, in terms of kind of just the amount of chances they're conceding and just anything that any of the stats that would indicate what a good defense should be, it, it, it's it's not even just put, making them out to be mediocre. It's making them out to be very bad. So so whoever can't, you know, if it's Ralph that, you know, obviously it is Ralph that's going to be, be coming in. I think his primary job is going to be to look at that because they've conceded, a, you know, a fair amount of goals as a result. They're still scoring goals. Like their goal scored seems to be fine. Um, and they've lost five games already. If you look at kind of if I look if I kind of look through the results, scanning through here, you know it's stuff like you know they start the season well, five one against Leeds, they they won, but you know drawing at Southampton, losing sorry, you know they beat beat Wolves, beat Newcastle, but they did okay in September. I'm having a look at this. It was losing then losing the Villa. If you remember that game when they lost to Villa and then they drew to Everton and they lost to Leicester, got battered mm. by Liverpool. Um, you know, beaten, I lost to City and then got battered against Watford. You know, it's, it's not really been much by way of quantity. I, look, I, I think whatever the case, I do agree with you. Like, it is it is very early on in the season. Um, there's still time for United to turn around. They've got definitely got the players to turn it around. But when, you know, when we look at just this Thursday coming up, mate, I mean, what do you think? So, you know, we're coming off a win. Um, it, you know, it, it, in, w- with that in mind, um, you know, we're probably back on a slightly positive sort of trend but our, our our record at old trafford isn't really a good one is it mate like we we won last season one nil but generally it isn't good how much do you think that will matter how how much do you think that will will come into do you think those things matter generally they i think i think they do but i don't think our record at old trafford's like terrible i could be wrong i could be wrong i'm trying to think back i think there's been a couple of draws in recent years like you said the the win last season that was the Abamyang offside goal, wasn't it? And then it wasn't offside. Was that last season? Yeah, was that it was given offside and then he, he, was it so no, but wasn't that a draw that game? Was it a draw? I thought we I won think that, that game. no, we oh. won last season, but I think I oh, thought okay. the Abamyang that that goal was the season before. I was trying to recall this, like you're probably um, right. You're probably right. I could I couldn't think when I was thinking about it before. I couldn't remember how we scored that game. Was it a penalty? <laughs> Um, anyway, we have to Google it. I, I can't remember. It. I can't remember now. But I remember, um, like, you remember it was, it was the party, so it it was, count, yeah. and it was the party El Nenny show. Oh, uh, El Nenny, but yeah, yeah, he had a he had a stormer, didn't he? That game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it it it, it potentially does um, make a little bit of a difference, but again, like, there's so many new bodies in this team, um, and if you know, <laughs> if we did indeed win last season as well, I guess that bodes well for us. If if it does have any impact on on how the players go into this one. Um, I'm really not sure what to expect because I just feel like with United, like I can see them turning it on. I can see them turning it on. It's a night game at Old Trafford. Um, I think Ronaldo is going to come back into the team. Um, and I can see them like, it's just, it's just that typical, like we're playing them at probably the worst time that we could probably play them considering their situation. Um, I would have preferred to have played them obviously a few weeks ago when, when Solskjaer was still there and things were kind of crumbling for them. Um, but I'm not really sure. I'm just really not sure what to expect in terms of a result or how the game's going to go. Um, I do think they'll be better. I think it'll be a much more even game than what it would have been a few weeks ago. Like, I do think if, we were, if we'd gone there a few weeks ago, I think we could have maybe really turned them over. Um, I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. Um, 
And I just think they're going to be really, really up for it because they've just been like hammered in terms of results quite recently. And also just like, you know, in the press and in the media and stuff, they've just been hammered. Right. Um, so yeah, it's pretty crap analysis to be honest, any sort of prediction. Cause I, 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 I'm really not sure what to expect. And like you said, like the Ranick thing, Carrick taking charge of the team, it's all, it's all really hard to know or, or, or difficult to say how all that's going to like, play into the actual match yeah yeah what do do you think i mean uh yeah i I, so i think the fact that he's not physically there Mm. ragnar's not physically there is only going to be a good thing for us i think the fact that united have had one less day's rest than us um you know they had they had chelsea on sunday Mm, obviously we had the early kickoff at home to newcastle so they had the away game at Stamford Bridge and, you know, that, that extra day. Um, I think that won't be, that won't be ideal. So, you know, whoever it is, if it's Carrick, if it's, if it's Carrick, if it's um, Ragnik, whoever is really kind of going to be the driving force behind their preparations for Thursday, it's not that much time to prepare for a team like Arsenal. Who I think like now, like because of Arteta, I feel like whoever, whoever you are, who comes against Arsenal, whether you end up doing well or not, I don't think you can do well unless you have a plan because I think that we tr- we do try to do some clever things positionally. There's the you know there's the complexity that now our ball playing centre halves bring. You know there's the complexity about the positions that our fullbacks take up. There's the complexity with how our you know kind of the, the Saka Smith Rowe kind of dynamic works. There's there's lots of different there's lots of things which I think you need to prepare for if you play with Arsenal, the distribution of rounds, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So it's more like, I think that could play a part. I think the fact that well, I, I don't think Man United will enjoy the fact that they're playing Arsenal in that, in this short gap between two games um, on paper, Man United still have a, a, a real quality set of players. And, and I agree with you that under the lights at Old Trafford, like, you know, maybe that will all kind of be a thing, but equally, I hope it will be a thing for our boys. I hope our boys will be like Old Trafford under the lights. Let's do this. And I think we've got those kind of characters now, you know. Um, fine. I think some to some extent that mentality might have actually got exposed against Liverpool and we came across a little bit of naive, but I think they might, hopefully they'll have learned from that. You know, you've got people like Ben White, Gabrielle, who I think, you know, are, are cool, steady heads. And I think that, um, you know, we'll have plans to, you know, mitigate against their players. Um yeah, so I think it will be an interesting one. Uh, what, what do you think in terms of the lineup, though? Like, because I think that will be quite interesting. I was just, just going to ask you if you thought if you think Tierney is going to come back in. I think that's a really interesting one. But so I, I thought Tierney would come back in for for mm, you know so Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and after the fir- after Tavares' first half, who yeah, maybe like you said, maybe some of us were being asked, maybe myself included, were, were being harsh about his first half. I sort of I thought there was a chance that Tierney would come on during the game at some point, um, but obviously not after the second half Tavares had. And I think after the second half Tavares had, you know, I don't really see how you can you can drop him, you know, for the. Oh, really? for the uh, yeah, reckon, yeah. I, I, I don't think so. I mean, look, if, if if Arteta was willing to play Tavares at left back against Liverpool when Tierney was actually fit at that point, he had played for Scotland, right? Like, so he was fit. Mm. Um, if we, if he was willing to play Tavares away at Anfield of that game I don't see why he wouldn't play Tavares away at Old Trafford in this game after the game he had um you know against Newcastle um where you know he, he particularly ended the game very well so I, I I see Tavares starting personally for me uh the bigger question here is whether Saka's fit or not and if Saka's mm. not fit what does that mean um and before I would have said oh well it means that Pepe's coming in yeah um but Martinelli certainly got, you know, certainly given Arteta something to think about. Do you, do you, I mean, after, I, after yeah. go on, sorry, go on. No, mate. no, no. I mean, yes. And it, 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 look, hopefully Saka is fit. If he's not, I think it's quite a big call to, to put Pepe in considering he's been, he's, 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 he's not been playing at all. He's not been starting at all. That's for sure. And I don't, can't, I'm trying to think of games that he's come on in. Um, and he's clearly, would you say he's just out of form? Like, I don't know if someone's not really yeah. playing and they're not really getting a looking, they're out of form. I'd, it's quite a big game to put him in and expect him to fill Saka's boots. Whereas you've got, you've got Martinelli, who's been a little bit um, kind of in and out of the team. Like, um, I, I, yeah. In and out of the team in, in recent months, but 
he's he's gonna he's he's gonna be like full of like more than full of confidence. He's just gonna be raring to go for the next one and hoping that he gets a get some minutes. Um, whereas I think if you play Pepe, it's like a Pepe who's probably quite low on confidence, um, probably doesn't have the faith of his manager at the moment and probably feels that. Um, so I can see him going with Martinelli. Actually, I could see, yeah, I could see him go with Martinelli for those reasons. I could see him go with Martinelli if Saka's not fit. Um, and I think the other interesting one is is because obviously he brought brought Erdegaard in, and that was quite an obvious change when you think about the opposition um, against Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think do you think Laka comes back in, or do you think he tries something, or, or Erdegaard, or do you think he tries something different? Really good question. Um, I would have said that I think that. You know, Laka tends to start big games, especially away from home, right? Mm-hmm. And he's 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 quite, I think he's quite good like that. Laka's a very clever, savvy player. You know, he kind of is when in some of those big games. And, you, yeah, exactly, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? He's a nuisance. Like mm-hmm. he, it's a sort of game where you can imagine he might, he, he might wind someone up and he mm-hmm. might kind of, you know. So, so I think he might do that. Um, mm-hmm. But the thing is what I noticed from Odegaard against Newcastle was, Okay, fine. I I don't think he did many miraculous things on the ball, but his work rate was so good off the ball. Mm -hmm. And the amount Odegaard presses, and when you see him, um, he really, really G's up the rest of the players, particularly the attacking line. You see him so many times. He's instructing people to press, and he's kind of adding a lot of energy, and people are sort of following his lead in that way. I think yeah, he he has got just a superb engine in that way. I mean, like Laka works hard. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I think that if there is someone, if if we think that Man United's defense and central midfield can be moved around, if we think that they can be kind of kind of yeah. you know, manipulated, I wonder if he'll go for for Odegaard. But mm. so I, I really, I really, don't, yeah, not to see it on the fence. I don't think I can call this one. I, I think that whichever one he picks, I think I'll sort of understand, and I don't think I'd be critical of uh, of which one. But I think I will. I will completely agree with what you've said. I think I would be, and you and I are probably the two biggest Pepe fans in our little Arsaholics podcast, mm. but I will be disappointed if he starts, if, if Saka is injured, I will be disappointed if he starts Pepe over Martinelli. Or, 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 do, you, or do you think, yeah, I agree. And do you think if Saka is injured, he might just bring in Lacazette and play, could he play Odegaard and Lacazette? Is that, there's not, is, the, is the balance there? On the left and the right, possibly not. I think, not. The, problem, I think like, the problem is if he did that, that, that might indicate... Well, it depends. You know, like we've done this thing where... It, we've done this th- thing a couple of times this season where we've kind of experimented either with two up top or four, three, three, and we never know, mm. like, you know, if, if Arteta might want to do something like that. I, I'd hate to think that we would play the same formation that we've been playing and put Aubameyang as, on the left wing and put yeah. Laka up front. and I, I'd, I'd hate to think that we'd do that. Um, do you think there's a chance that he will drop over and play Lacazette as uh, as number nine? I think I think on form you you couldn't you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to question him if he did drop Aubameyang, but I can't see him doing it. If that makes sense, like I think I think if he if he were dropped for for tomorrow, if he didn't start. You wouldn't like you would you'd be surprised, but you'd probably think, okay, it's an understandable decision. But I just I just can't see him dropping. Like he's a captain, um, he's obviously the number one striker, and okay, he's he his miss on Saturday, uh, Saturday, yeah, his miss on Saturday, which we didn't talk about, was, I mean, I don't know what word you used to describe it, but it was it was awful. You still you I kind of feel like you still need a Bamiang in the team to take. Hopefully he gets a couple of chances and hopefully he does take one. Um, mm-hmm. Not to say that Laka wouldn't, um, but then if you play Laka and you don't play over, you do lose a lot of movement up front because Laka is going to drop deep. So then you're kind of relying on Smith Rowe and let's say Martinelli to be the guys making the forward runs um, in a, in and in and behind the the back line um, and getting into the box and kind of almost seems like a complete change. It will obviously be a big change in the system. So, yeah, I feel like it's quite a big change for what is a big game. Like, I think he's just going to rely on Aubameyang as, as his kind of senior striker or main striker. Um, so, yeah, no, I can't see him dropping him, personally. I, I, I agree with that, mate. And so, look, I think if we look to just conclude, so, look, if we... We're currently five points above Man United. 
um you know if we if we were to win that would mean eight points obviously if we were to lose then that narrows the gap down to two points mm-hmm. we, we've we've you know we've fortunately put ourselves in this position right where you know again like when we lost to liverpool if we lose to if we, if we lose to man united then the important thing is just that we mentally switch back on because points wise it's not the end of the world right it's like you know it's we we've, we've got a decent amount of points on the board we've still won four out of our last last five games so yeah we, we we've still done okay but um west ham, who are west ham playing west ham are playing yeah I'll, I'll i'll tell you now west ham are playing uh, Chelsea on Saturday. They're not playing. Oh no, sorry, sorry. They're playing uh, Brighton tomorrow. Brighton. Okay, yeah, I've got it up now as well. They're yeah. playing Brighton tomorrow. Okay, yeah, they're playing yeah. Brighton tomorrow. They're home at Brighton. You'd probably back them to beat Brighton at home. But Brighton are tricky. Brighton, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it might could be an interesting result there. We'll see. Yeah. So it's a, it, you know a win against United, and if West Ham drop points, I mean that you know that ends up being a great um, a great couple of days for us but um you know what do you what do you think anyway do you think we yeah. will, what, do, what 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 do you think the score's going to be like, i mean i'm not to be, personally i hadn't, hadn't even, obviously i hadn't even looked at who west ham are playing um i think it's kind of early i don't know for me it's quite early in to the start season, looking so, at it that way yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, like, yeah i hadn't even considered it um if results go away then great if they don't they don't um but in terms of our game um i i'm going to go with a draw i'm going to go with one one um, like I said before, I feel like United uh, equally will be up for it. I think they'll be well up for it. Um, and they, it's, it feels like it's kind of like a game for them where they've got something to prove. Like, you know, they've just had a bad time of it of late. Um, Carrick's last game, all of that. There's just a few things that might potentially go for them. And I think the old Trafford factor, like the fans are going to be really, really up for it as well. Um, and I, and I think a draw, I, I would absolutely take a draw. Like, obviously, look, I want to go there and win and and increase that gap. And and it's almost, that would be a quite a big statement win for us, you know. Um, but I would absolutely take a draw because it just keeps the gap at five points and it keeps us, you know, it just keeps us ticking over really. And then we've got the games that we've got coming up where you do expect us to take three points in some of those games or most of those games. And I think I think that's what, if we can do that this season, that could well be enough for top four, maybe. Like if you just, okay, let's assume we don't take any more points against the top three, but against all of the other side, not I say all of the other sides, but a lot of the other sides that we know are lesser than us and we should be beating like Southampton and Newcastle and these sorts of teams, you know, get be consistent in those games, um, get the points in those and then, that might even be enough. And you can always say, yeah, getting a draw at Old Trafford is, 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 is a good result. So yeah, I'm going to go with the draw. I think it'll be a fairly even game. Um, and, I, and, and I'll be very, very happy with the draw, to be honest. Is that a, uh, a 1-1, a 0-0, one, one, a 2-2? One, 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 for for a number of reasons, I think that both teams are going to be up for it. Um, my heart tells me that um, we are because you know we've had a good home record this season. Our away record hasn't been as great. My 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 heart tells me that we are due kind of this another breakthrough performance this season away from home against kind of you know I know fine we beat Leicester two 0 but uh, my heart tells me that, that you know we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna win two one. It's going to be an epic kind of it's going to be an epic game and we're going to Smith Rowe is going to score the winner in the 85th minute or something like this. Uh, I think it's more like, I I, I say I can't see us losing. Mm. I can't, I can see lots of permutations by the way we lose in the sense that I can, I can see Ronaldo scoring. I think he will score. Um, I can see De Gea playing a blinder. I mean, you know, but I'm going to go for a draw as well, mate. Um, I think that, uh, I hate to go for the same thing. I think it's going to be one one or nil nil. Mm. So you think it'd be a good game, but nil nil potentially. I, I I think it. I think maybe. Um, mm. I think that sounds massively contradictory. I think no, that, no, um, okay, you know, it yeah. could be a really interesting game. And just yeah, no goals, but yeah, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I was going maybe nil nil because I wanted to do something different. But otherwise, mm. I, if I, if I, if I if it was completely agnostic of what you said, I'd say one one as well. Actually, like. Um, so look, let, let, look, but let's hope for a win. I mean, a, a win is certainly possible. We're certainly good enough. Um, you know, we've we've got 
we've got we've, I think both you and I are very optimistic I think we represent a lot of the fan base in that way you know I think everyone's got a real feel good factor there's a young team hungry team a growing team a team who've got their feet on the ground I think they know what's at stake I think they got perspective I think they understand if they do like what you mentioned before if they win the games that they're meant to win if they do all the basics right then you know we might end up having a really good season and and I think they'll go into United with with confidence I think they'll go there and they'll think we can beat them um mm. I'd like to see us play how we did against Leicester I'd like to see us take the first 30 minutes and and just try and try and basically blitz, blitz them, them in 30 yeah, minutes yeah. you know yeah. just take that pace like and um I'd like to see that and then and then you know what if we have to spend the rest of the game counter-attacking I think we you know we're decent now at absorbing pressure and I think you know we, maybe that's the way to go so that's my ideal situation um so let's hope for the best, mate. I mean, look, I, I thoroughly enjoyed getting back on the podcast with you. I have to say, yeah, it feels like it's been I ages, hasn't it? it? <laughs> I've missed it. I've missed it. It'll be nice to get the others on at some point soon if if they're allowed to. Oh, no, I'm joking. Um, so yeah, no, no, I missed it. Um, it's good, good chat again. And yeah, man, let's try and do this a bit more often, eh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and just looking at the fixtures again, just to be clear. So, oh yeah, like you say, we're playing Monday night football. So at least there's a break, you know, at least that we've got, it's not like we're playing Thursday and then playing Sunday. At least we've got, We've got Monday, so that's okay. Um, uh, so, look, I think that realistically, Myers, if you think about it, mm. I'm not 100% sure that we're going to get a chance to record before Everton, mm. right? Because even if we record on Sunday night, um, you know, well, no, we might be able to release something on Monday. Oh, we'll see. But anyway, you know, there is, there's, there's, a, there's a chance. We didn't really think about an Everton prediction. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. For. Well, I don't know. I, I think that that'll be that. I think, well, in my opinion, if I was to give an Everton prediction, I think it would be really dependent on what happens Agreed. on Thursday, Agreed. you know? Agreed. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, so let's say, but, but, you know, it's one of these things that United and Everton away are both winnable games are also very losable games. I know yeah, that, yeah. you know, that sounds like a, maybe a silly thing to say, but uh, you know, they, they're not, they're not on paper always the easiest places at all. So look, let's hope for the best. Um, good chat up the Arsenal. Um, let's really, really hope we can get that win win on thursday um really looking forward to it now um hopefully that doesn't end badly for us but uh yeah yeah let's see what happens but yeah fingers crossed nice one rog thanks a lot excellent mate all right see you guys see ya